The power of radio is in your hands. You can play. You, you, you can pause. Rewind. You can download. It's Vicky Lonia Radio. Solely for your listening pleasure. You are listening to your number one online edutainment radio. The greatest inventions of the world were possible through mathematics. You say mathematics is difficult? Let's prove you wrong. Welcome to Keeping Up With Mathematics. Tune in every Tuesday at 12 p.m. on Vicky Lonia Radio as Romero exposes all the tricks to solving math problems faster and easier. Oh yes, mathematics just got easier. Good afternoon, wonderful listeners out there. We're back again on Vicky Radio, your number one entertainment radio. Solemn for your listening pleasure. And we're back with our new series, Keeping Up With Mathematics. Don't forget to join us on Facebook, Keeping Up With Mathematics. Follow on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, Vicky Radio also. Last week, we started a topic integration and what we see integration was simply adding one to the value of the power and dividing by that new power for instance when you're asked to differentiate s what do you do s raised to power one s raised to power two what do you do s raised to power two plus one divided by two plus one then we have s raised to power three divided by three very easy we talked about direct method different method of integration direct method we talked about substitution method and today we'll be talking about integration by using partial fraction method and integration by path method if you part of our show last week i hope by now you must have done your little work or assignment i was giving answers will be on our facebook page keeping up with mathematics so today we'll be talking about integration by using partial fraction method it's quite very easy when we talk about integration by using partial fraction methods when you're given a very complex fraction and you're asked to integrate it is quite difficult to integrate what do we do we'll break them down into partial fractions into smaller fractions that will be easier for us to integrate for example when you have to integrate s all over bracket open s plus one bracket close bracket open s plus two is quite complex what do you break them down for instance now s all over s plus one bracket open s plus two we will now become a let's assume we're going to take a and b as a different partial pressure so a divided by s plus one plus b divided by s plus two that's what we'll break them down. So we we have that expression. We say a is now equals to a open bracket s plus two. That's the s plus two over b. We have to cross over to a when multiplying like a normal cross multiplication. So we have a equals to a open bracket s plus two plus b open bracket s plus one. Now when s let's say when s plus 2 is equals to 0 then s equals to b minus 2 let's substitute s as minus 2 into the equation yeah into the equation a bracket open s plus 2 plus b bracket open s plus 1 so what do we have minus 2 equals to a bracket open minus 2 plus 2 bracket close plus b bracket open minus 2 plus 1 we have minus 2 which is our s initially is now equals to a bracket open 0 bracket close plus b bracket open minus 1 bracket close anything multiplied by 0 is 1 so we are left with minus 2 is equals to minus b then our b is equals to 2 we now have the value of b as 2 then for when s plus 1 is equals to 0 the value of s happens to be minus 1 then what do we do minus 1 equals to simply put minus 1 into the same equation minus 1 after that equals to a bracket open minus 1 plus 2 bracket close plus b bracket open minus 1 plus 1 bracket close then we are left with minus 1 it's equals to a that means our a is equal to minus 1 now we have our a and we have our b let's substitute them into the initial equation of a bracket a cross uh, cross over s plus one plus b all over s plus two so what do we have now we have integrate 
minus 1 over s plus 1 that is our a ds plus integrate 2 over s plus 2 the 2 is for our b so now we have to integrate these two different uh, these two different fractions to have our integration and remember using the inverse rule of inverse rule of integration where you have minus 1 integrated by the value of s on that or any number being integrated by and s is an inverse of that number what do we do we have to write them minus in bracket open s plus 1 plus 2 in s plus 2 how do we get in it's an it's a rule in integration where you have inverse differentiation of s anyway it is so here we have a minus 1 cross multiply I mean divided by s plus 1 s plus 1 happens to be the inverse there so what do you do right minus inverse bracket open s plus 1 inverse is i capital letter i n you just write it that way plus the same thing for the other part so this we have two on top we have plus 2 inverse s plus 2 plus our constant c it's as simple as that then we have to move it to that the minus sign will be in the middle then we have 2 inverse s plus 2 minus 1 inverse s plus 2 plus c our constant i really hope that was very quite easy to understand now so our second method of integration we're going to discuss for the day integration by part method this is quite very complex this is mostly this method is mostly used when you are integrating the product of two factors and most times it's used when substitution method of integration happens not to work very well for instance when you have s multiplied by cos s product both factors of s this is the best method to use now for us to divide the formula they have a, it have a standard formula that if, if you're differentiating u dv is equals to uv minus integrate v du it's a constant formula now, okay, let me explain how we come about our formula when you're uh, integrating when you're integrating factors of x we call those two factors we call one u and we call one v depending on anyone that is easier for you to understand you call it u one u you call one v so when we when we, when we integrating the u dv uh, the l what we have we have u dv over the s plus v du over the s so we move u one time we have u dv over the s is equals to the u dv over the s minus v du over the s now when we integrate one side, we now have integration of u dv now will now be equals to uv minus integrate of v du. That's how we come about that formula. Don't forget that formula is the base of integration when you are using part method. Is the major formula we use. So for instance, now let's start. When we are asked to integrate us sin s, what do you do? We we'll call one u and we we'll call one v. Let's call s u and let's call sin s v. So u is equals to s and v is equals to sin s. Du will equal will now be equals to ds and dv will now be equals to sin s ds. Then let's meaning we have to integrate this sin s then, then v. Standing alone will now be equal to integrate of sin s ds, which is minus cos s, which is minus cos s. So now we have this. We have u is equal to here s. We have v is equal to minus cos s. We have uh, 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 the v is equal to sin s. Then we have uh, uh, du is equal to ds. So let's impute these variables into our formula. So when we ask to integrate u dv is a one we bring out our formula integrate value integrate sign u dv equals to u v minus integrate v du. So what do we write? We have the first u is equals to s now. So we have s multiplied by our v is now what minus cos s. So s multiplied minus cos s we have will give us what minus s cos s. We have that part minus now integrate sign then our v is what minus cos s 
when minus cos s and our du is what the s meaning we have to because we integrate sign we also have to integrate that part you understand that we have to integrate the minus cos s so we are left with now with our integrate of the udv we now are left with minus cos s plus sine s because integration of cos s is equal to sine s sorry integration of minus cos s is equal to sine s so integrating s sine s will now be equal to minus s cos s plus sine s don't forget our integral constant c plus c okay i'm pretty sure most of us don't grab let me take time to explain again now our standard formula for integration by parts is integral sine u dv it's equal to what uv minus integral sine v du i already explained how we derive that formula so when we are asked to so when we are asked to integrate s sine s you call one of the variables one of the factors of s u and the other one v let's assume s is u let's call s u and sign s z and the s so what do we do the u is equals to the s since u is equals to the s the u is also equals to the s so v is equals to sign s so what then our dv is equals to sign s the s you integrate sign s remember when you have the s in front of let us say yeah in front of any factor of x we have to integrate so we integrate sin s to give us minus cos s that means our v is what minus cos s in putting these variables into our formula we have what u that is equal to s now become s multiplied by what is our v our v is minus cos s that way we have what minus s cos s then for our v v is equals to what minus cos s and du is equals to ds so we integrate see that an integral sign there also so we integrate when you integrate minus cos s we have plus sign s so our answer then now becomes minus s cos s plus sign s plus our integral constant c i'm really very sure you really do understand well we've come to the end of this week's episode and with that we've covered a different method of solving integration i really hope you do understand don't forget to follow us on instagram on twitter and on facebook at the colonial radio and also for the show on facebook keeping up with mathematics when you open you can get our whatsapp group link and join on whatsapp for further clarification so for this week our assignment you have to integrate sine s it's quite easy integrate sine s and also integrate s square cos s s square cos s well there is a whole lot of things to learn about integration but for now this is where we will end for the day have a very wonderful day thank you